Sports Network, presenting to you from Municipal Stadium. Playing in their own stadium, we've got the Condors. They're going up against the Renegades. I'm Dan Stevens, and joining me is my good friend, Peter O'Keefe. Let's review some of the players in today's matchup, Peter. These two all pros are what it's all about. Big time performances, last play heroics, and consummate professionalism. But the other team is also loaded with talent. These are two guys that bring greatness to a team. They, they make a good team great. And the rest of the all pros in this list are no slouches either. Okay, Peter, it's time for the coin toss. Let's listen in. Good game. Good game tonight. Thanks. O'Donnell sends it away to begin the game. Neal decides to take it out of the end zone. Ooh, hard up to 27. The Renegades will start this drive at their own 27-yard line. Walker makes the catch out to the left and is well past the markers for a first down. You guys ain't got game! up second down Steve Richards got yards by staying so close to his blockers I think they were sharing each other's aftershave they move the ball and it will be second down second down three yards to go The Condors are going to try and capitalize on the interception. They'll start this drive at the 43-yard line. Lomax fires this one over the middle, and it is not real in, incomplete. Drew Marsh was the man on that play coming across the middle, but the ball couldn't find him incomplete potential for some nice yards but it falls incomplete that will bring up second down Anderson used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. Lomax really put some arm behind this one, and they get the first on third and long. Neil Lomax made a good 
good, clean throw. That's a textbook play executed perfectly. His first huge connection of the day was two inches from the sun, I swear. All right, settle down. Slight exaggeration there, <laughs> well, big guy. Okay. All right, that was a big play. This defense better watch themselves. A line has just been drawn. Well, the defense has its hands full, Dan. Do they protect against the run or try to neutralize this passing? Anderson gets the call and passes the line. Touchdown! Dan, this is a rookie little run here to pick up the yards he needs. He knew just where to go. That's the first score of the game, and it was very nicely done, Peter. Great execution there. O'Donnell booms one downfield. Neal is coming out with it. Back down at the 19. Portland Neal got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Renegades were intercepted last time out. We'll see what happens here. We'll start at their own 19-yard line. Richards will lose a bunch here, and that will bring up second down. We had an injury away from the ball, and they are sending out the trainers. As always, we'll hope for the best, and any updates that we get, we'll pass along to you. Mark Walker just got tangled up on that last play, and you don't envy him right now. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Hell yeah, brother. Oh. Fourth down coming up. Jeremy Smith came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. It seemed like the defense read that one from the beginning and they forced the incompletion with relative ease. Beautiful call by the D coordinator. It'll be fourth down. Hayes lines up to punt after the three and out. Gets the ball and punts it away. Mitchell catches it to the 38. Locked down at the 42.
The Condors had an effective first drive, and we'll see if they can keep it up. They'll start at their 42-yard line. has just one guy on him and he beats him easily even with my few extra pounds I, I think I could have done a better job covering him oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I doubt that he would have smoked you like a salmon hmm, that, that sounds pretty good a beautiful pickup Peter everyone on the offense is happy about that play definitely great call by the offensive coordinator Dexter Manley had crossed the plane made by the tips of the football on that last one, so he got the call for a neutral zone infraction. diagnosis is that he twisted his ankle they are trying to find a brace to help him out but nothing seems to be working they're listing his return as doubtful well we'll hope for the best thanks Peter second down three yards to go Anderson will get the on second down and barely gets past the line of scrimmage for a negligible gain on the play Otis Anderson didn't get very far on that last play and he even had the help with some blocking I guess the defense had their number. Not much there, but they'll get another shot on third and short. Anderson will get the carry on third down and takes it upfield. And check out all the yards he snarfs up here. Yes, snarfs. That's an old football term. <laughs> Tell you what, though, this is a great play. That was his second rushing touchdown of the day. Not a bad day at the office so far. <laughs> That's typical production for him, Dan. He's that kind of player. O'Donnell crushes this one deep. Neal is coming out with it. Jude tackled at the 27. Portland Neal got the ball in the end zone and had a big run out of it. Saying though the touchback was a risk then, but it paid off. The Renegades have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at their own 27-yard line. Richards gets the carry on first down and barely gets past the line of scrimmage for a negligible gain on the play. 
Steve Richards got some help on that one in the form of blocking, but he still couldn't make a play out of it. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Jeff Howard anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. That'll give us a third down, and the defense was ready for that call. Well played, and a good job of not giving up the short pass. Third down and four wideouts in the game. Theismann throws a big high lob, and it's complete at the 45. Derek Brown really spanks the defense at the end of this one. Yep, solid grab, and then he takes off like a thief. Give him an inch, and he'll steal every yard he can. He gets the touchdown, Peter, and that was a very nice play. Definitely. after and it's good <laughs> Morris kicks it away Mitchell catches it back at the two. Left the 25. Bobby Mitchell got a very respectable return off that nice kickoff there, Dan. The Condors got into the end zone last time they had it, and they're looking to do it again. They'll start at their own 25-yard line. Keith Jordan couldn't get all the way positioned for the interception, but still managed to graze the ball with his fingertips. That had potential for some yards, Peter, but the defense was on top of it and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming oh. up. Anderson made an excellent grab back there and then tacked a few more on. Great effort. He did a good job getting his hands around the football and then he just took off with it. Yeah, he's not running any tricky patterns, but can pick up the extra yardage when he needs to. Anderson takes the hand and searches for a hole, hauls him down in the backfield, and that takes them even farther away from the markers. That will bring up fourth down. Ryan Milans targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That's his second tackle so far. Bidwell takes the long snap and punts it away. Neal fields the punt at the 26. Great three. Stop at the 45. Cortland Neal has a nice return coming up here off this punt. Watch. It's impressive the way he can make the right choices to keep the run back going. You can't coach that.
The Renegades take the field, and their running game has yet to get on track. We'll see if it happens here as we start it at their 45-yard line. the 36. Sean Baker gets to his man in the backfield for a big loss. I don't know what happened to the protection. Let's have a look. You know, D Dan, it's all about focus and persistence. He was not going to let that quarterback get that pass off. The defensive design worked flawlessly, and the refs will spot the ball well behind the original line of scrimmage. What a way to derail a series from the onset. Second and long ahead. for a gain of 15. Gerald McLaughlin has three guys surrounding him and still snares him. I don't know if it was a good effort by him or a bad one by the D. Oh, Dan, it's hard to believe that play came off against triple coverage. Nice game, and that puts them in a very convertible third down situation. Yeah, you know, Dan, my last convertible was a 72 Nova. You know, Peter, it's no wonder you were a lineman. <laughs> Down two tight ends in the game. Tackles him for a short run. That will bring up fourth down. Keith Jordan got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. They take away any and all room and prevent that play from getting past the line of scrimmage. Fourth down coming up. It away. Mitchell at the 10. Hammered down at the 15. The Condors stalled early last drive. We'll have to see what happens here. We'll start at their own 15 yard line. Second down, five yards to go. Down. Anderson gets the call again and barely picks up the first down. A flag is thrown on the play. Let's see what it is. about three yards and that'll do it for quarter number one the condors are out in front 14 to 7 Great effort. They force that one backwards, and that's going to make this third down that much harder. Yeah, they also make it easier on themselves by wiping out all of the potential short yardage plays they might face. Third and long. Pittman pulls it in right side, and they get the first. 
first on third and long. Barry Pittman is just crazy good on this play then. He refuses to be intimidated by triple coverage. I would have tried to throw somewhere else, I think. Oh, but it didn't matter. He made the catch. Great job. Third and long, and they get the big play to convert. What do you think of that, Peter? I love it. That's what football is all about, making the big plays when you need to, and you can't coach that. Lomax zips it to the left sideline, and this one is incomplete. Leroy Green found an empty seam in the coverage, but the throw couldn't find him. Nothing frustrates an open receiver more. Potential for some nice yards and some nice yards after the catch, but it falls incomplete. Uh, that could have been a big play. It'll be second down. in the flat and tries to get free. Pushed out at the 49. Otis Anderson is wide open on that play. Makes you wonder if the defensive coordinator wants to keep his job or not. Time and time again, he makes a fantastic option of himself coming out of the backfield. Well, there are some runners that just have a knack for the passing game, and this guy's got it. the D on this play. It's worth another look here. Oh, it's all about accuracy, Dan, and there was only one guy covering him on that one, so it makes it an easy catch. Good grab on that play. It didn't go for a whole lot of distance, but it kept the ball moving. He's doing all right with the short throw, but there's nothing really to write home about. Milan throws him for a loss at the 43. Ryan Milans read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. That will be his fourth tackle right. of the contest. there and was able to get by it for the reception. That's how you draw it up. The short game is working okay for them. It's been methodical, but they are moving the ball. Yeah, they need to strike deep at some point, though, to loosen up that secondary. It's intercepted! Juice brought down at the 43. Daryl Green has this pass dead to rights all the way, Dan. He's got the interception and enough room to run the ball and give his offense a head start. Boy, that was a heads-up play to come away with his first interception of the game. Yeah, you gotta love D like that. The Renegades oh. bring their offense on the field and will start this drive at their 43-yard line. coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Perryman makes a play on this one and forces the incompletion. John Perryman calculates the pattern right off the line, locates the ball. Oh, just gets a finger on it. That broke up a sure completion. A nice throw down the field, but the defense plays it perfectly. Great coverage downfield that time. Third and long. 
strong, baby. Let's get this ball back. Let's go. This one and it's caught at the 48, and he's stopped right there. Hellman will get credited with the tackle on the force out. It'll be fourth down. Julius Hellman forced his man out back there, allowed some yards, yes, but stopped them short of the markers. They gave up some yardage there, but managed to keep them from converting. And that's the magic word here. I think the defense won this round. Oh, yeah. Fourth down coming up. Hayes lines up for the punt. Hayes gets the ball and punts it away. Mitchell fields the front and the level. Tackled at the 19. Bobby Mitchell did a nice job getting some yards after fielding the solid punt. The Condors had their last drive stall at the tail end. We'll see if they can keep momentum throughout this one, which starts at their own 19-yard line. Anderson carries it for the 12th time and gains about three yards. Second down, two wideouts on the field. Yeah. Watch the Watch the Tower the fastball over the middle, and that's good for a gain of five. Neil Lomax threw a perfect pass back there. You know, I had a better shot at it than the defense did, and hey, I'm up here in the booth. You have to respect this offensive game plan. That was their third connection downfield today, Peter. Yep, the coaches must have found a weak spot in that secondary. Anderson will get the carry on third down and hands wide left. Dragged down at the 30. It will be first down. Otis Anderson got a little help from his friends on that play, Dan. They gave him the space he needed to make the play. Great blocking up front. Well, Peter, a pretty nice job there converting on third down. Yeah, didn't get a lot, but didn't need to. Good job. Green makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Daryl Green came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. Second down, three wideouts in the game. Anderson will get the carry in the second down and will gain close to six. Otis Anderson stayed with his blockers on that last one, and it paid off big time. You know, Dan, it's always good to have a wingman or two. They move the ball, and that'll bring up third down. Halley didn't haul that one in, and it falls incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Neil Lomax tried to force a risky pass into double coverage, but incomplete. Peter, in third down situations, they have not been successful at all with the pass. This play was more proof. Boy, third is such a crucial down, Dan. And when you don't convert, it really hurts. the ball and punts it away. Neal catches it at the 27. Drag down at the 31. The Renegades will begin the drive at their 31-yard line.
Richards catches it the sideline, and that's good for six. Steve Richards made an excellent grab back there and then tacked a few more on. Great effort. He just couldn't get cranked up coming out of the tunnel, waiting until the second quarter to make his first catch. And you know, that's a big confidence builder, Dan. Now he should be able to settle into his game and contribute. Second down with two tight ends to the right. Richards throws it off the toss and picks up a couple. Steve Richards used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. Theismann makes a terrific completion in double coverage here. Wow, now that is one confident QB. It was third and long, but it didn't phase them. They moved the ball, and now they move the chains. Yeah, really nice play calling, Dan. Let's give them no chance for three here, all right? Three and four. Carrier. He's quick and he knows how to hurt a guy. That's his second tackle so far. Blitz possibility here, fellas. Hands up. Mac catches it over the middle, and that will be a gain of three yards. Willie Mack had a defender close by, but was able to bring down the catch. Right there, he was able to make a good grab and pick up a couple of yards. That's the kind of play that can put a lot of pressure on a defense. They tried to stop him, but just couldn't get it done. chance for a reception there that's the second time he slapped that ball out of there excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball passed Theismann oh. sings it to the right side and it's tipped 
Incomplete. Jeff Gallery swatted that pass away right at the line. Yet another big play by this defense. That was their fifth batted ball today. Yeah, you can see them start to anticipate the path of the throw the minute the quarterback winds up. Forced the incompletion. Well, the D holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator. Oh, it sure was. Perfect D for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field. it from 49 yards out and puts it through it's good Willard Morris really gets the whole ball here and he needed it watch that's a powerful kick for three points my friend when he needs to he can boot that thing the field goal puts them a little closer to tying things up yeah and that's a positive note their coach can point to when he tries to pump up his team at halftime Morris hits a boomer down the field. Mitchell decides to take it out of the end zone. Drop down at the 24. Bobby Mitchell got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Condors are looking for some separation before the half, and will start this drive at their own 24-yard line. Anderson will get the carry on first down and the field. Tackled and the clock will continue to run. Second down and they line up with three tight ends. First half of this one. The Condors are out in front 14 to 10. Well, Dan, what do you say? You ready to dive into the 2K Sports halftime show? Well, here's a look at our halftime stats, and as you can see, it paints a pretty clear picture. The Condors should be way ahead on the scoreboard, but somehow they've let their opponents hang in there with them. Let's see if they can change things in the second half. Let's get started in this one early in the first quarter. Washington would come up with a big play to kill a drive as he was able to step in front of a wayward pass for an INT. Still early in the first, the Condors with possession at the 42. Lomax went to the air trying to convert on third down and he found his man. A 34-yard play that set up a home team touchdown. Midway through the first, the Condors out in front by seven. Anderson got the call on third down and it paid off. They move ahead by 14. The Renegades, midway through the first, Brown emerged as a real weapon as he pulled one in here. A 73-yard touchdown for the visitors. The Renegades back 14 to seven. Theismann would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. Unfortunately, they could not capitalize on the play. The Condors, later in the second, all at the 41. Green is reading the quarterback's eyes all the way, and he's able to get his hands on this one and picks it off. Late into the second quarter, the Renegades losing by seven. Morris is going to try to dial one in from very long distance. Plenty of leg to it, though. 
He's got it. And that will do it. The Condors are holding on to a lead 14 to 10. All right, good work, partner. The Condors will receive to start the second half, and they currently enjoy a small lead, 14 to 10. Now, let's get to the game. Morris sends it away to begin the second half. Mitchell fields the second half kickoff at the three. Stop at the 22. Bobby Mitchell got waylaid by the defense before he was able to put Munch on the run back. Ready to get this thing going? Let's do it. saw it and got the ball to him. The short game is working okay for them. It's been methodical, but they are moving the ball. Yeah, they need to strike deep at some point, though, to loosen up that secondary. short of the markers but you know Dan the only thing that's going to grow is this D's morale they hold pretty firm there and they've got to do it again on third and short third down and less than a yard Otis Anderson got yards by staying so close to his blockers. I think they were sharing each other's aftershave. A nice play, and with only a short distance to the first, they put it together and make it happen. Yeah, third and short always looks easy, but it's not, Dan. That's good execution. <laughs> Doesn't let a little thing like double coverage stop him from snagging the football. Nice second down call, and they will move the chain. On offense, it was right. always a plus to avoid third down altogether, just like that. First down from the eye. Anderson set up for the screen back there. He had blockers ready, but <laughs> forgot to catch the ball. receivers break and denied it that was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air and the offense is looking frustrated the d is showing excellent fundamentals right here man we need more out of you where you been today don't worry man i'm gonna get it turned around let's go
has a lot of time to sit and think about his pass here. There it goes. The O-line is buying him all kinds of time here. What a pass, and he is generating some great numbers. Oh, absolutely, Dan. So far, he's got 142 yards and one interception. First down, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Anderson makes the run way left and chews up about four on the play. Cody was shaken up earlier, and we've gotten a report on his condition. What did they say, Peter? The trainers have said that he's suffering from upper leg cramps. He's stretching it out down on the sideline, but with time running low, he may not be able to return. Thanks, Peter. Anderson used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. It'll be fourth down. Barry Pittman got out of bounds after getting some yardage, but you can tell that it wasn't as much as he wanted. Peter, they couldn't get the last few yards they wanted, and now it is fourth down. Boy, a good call, but as you said, they just couldn't get the last few yards they needed. Fourth down, two yards to go. from 36 yards out, and it's good. Neil O'Donnell has no problem getting this one between the sticks for three. Oh, he was so close. He could have made that if he was wearing wooden clogs. Uh, <laughs> well, unfortunately, I have a feeling we'll never know for sure. For the first time today, they leave the red zone with only a field goal to show for them. You know, overall, Dan, the defense has to be happy with how that one played out. O'Donnell hits a boomer down the field. Neal decides to take it out of the end zone. <laughs> the 20 run. Portland Neal got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Renegades take the field and will start out at their own 21-yard line. <laughs> Richards has his number two on the first down shoots forward for nine yards. Dan, they eat up some major yards on that run. This is a well-prepared rushing game. Well, Peter, credit his speed, coupled with the great blocking that he got, and that ensured he had room to run. They are the total package. Peter, what a nice pickup to get them into a second and short situation. Yeah, great play, and now they have a bunch of options on what to try next. Oh, 
the 28. You got a one like I wanted, huh? We're shutting you down, baby. You can't move the ball. Up four on the play. Joe Theismann demonstrated his arm strength back there with a solid cross field pass. He's been on point with the short pass so far, Dan. That pattern's worked so well, we're probably going to see it over and over again. Well, why not, Peter? His receivers are open and making grabs, and nobody has really stopped him from doing it. Richards has his number called on second down and barely picks up the first down. First down, just a single receiver on the field. perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line pushing them back a few yards in the process great effort Peter he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it you bet so far he's got six tackles <laughs> Richards gets the toss passes the line stop at the 44 Stop him here, we got problems. Joe Theismann was nailed by the oncoming rusher, but got rid of it just in time. Not much success to be had on the right side for this passing game, Peter. They have been off over there. Yeah, I'd go somewhere else if I were them. Hayes gets ready to punt it away. Hayes gets the ball and punts it away. Mitchell fields the ball. The 17. Stop at the 23. Bobby Mitchell got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Condors came away with three last time out and are looking for more. They'll start this drive at their own 23 yard line. Listen into the call. Todd Boston got hit by the ball. He wasn't expecting it, didn't mean to, but unfortunately he was an ineligible receiver and that's a penalty. Seven on the play. 
Neil Lomax is a quarterback who doesn't feel he has to force the issue. Yeah, he made a good, quick decision to fire the football right in there. And Dan, in his mind, nothing was going to stop him from completing that right. pass, unless, of course, it was intercepted. He is just gunslinging it now. This groove has led to an impressive string of completion. Yeah, he's got to keep thinking one pass at a time, Dan, and stay zeroed in. It only takes one bad shot to break a streak. Second down, three wideouts in the game. Washington penetrates and makes the stop at the 21. Joseph Washington keeps his man from getting back to the line. Let's watch. Pow! Oh, that's got to hurt. That will be his fourth tackle, and he's hitting hard out there in the secondary. Well, he's making them think twice before going his direction. Lomax zings it to the right side, and it's incomplete. Jerry Felder had that ball in his hands on that play, and then he just dropped it. That's a good example of how he's not yet reached his full potential. First drop pass of the game for him, and his quarterback hopes it's his last. How about blocking this thing? Come on, the swarm is gone. All right. Bidwell takes the snap and punts it away. Neal falls it in at the 42. Tackled at the 45. Portland Neal got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Renegades take the field and their running game has yet to get on track. We'll see if it happens here as we start it at their 45-yard line. Neisman throws this one right side. This time at 46. Finally stopped at the 37. Willie Mack keeps the party going here after hauling this one in. Well, Danny shows great hands and a little wiggle at the end of the play. Tough guy to bring down. When is enough enough? I mean, really? He finally corrals that last one, but only after a slew of missed opportunity. Well, I question going to a guy after so many unsuccessful attempts. Yeah. But, but they have faith in him, and it resulted in a completion that time. And that'll do it for the third quarter. The Condors are out in front, 17 to 10. Richards keeps the hands off and will end up losing a couple. Iowa Washington read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. That will be his fourth tackle of the contest. That's going to be a sizable loss. Watch this. Oh, man, that's going to push them way back. Great defensive play. Peter, he's really gotten after the quarterback in this game. Oh, you can say that again. So far, he's got one tackle and two sacks. Hayes gets ready to punt it away. Hayes takes the long snap and punts it away. Let the punt bounce for a touchdown. 
David Hayes saw his kid go squarely on him for a touchback with tough luck. The Condor, stalled early last drive. We'll have to see what happens here. We'll start at their own 20-yard line. Felder hauls in the pass and is at the 25. Brought down at the 28. Jerry Felder snatched it out of the air without any challenge from the defense, Dan. You know, my grandmother could have covered him better. The short game is working okay for them. It's been methodical, but they are moving the ball. Yeah, they need to strike deep at some point, though, to loosen up that secondary. Second down, two tight ends in the game. And goes right up the middle and barely picks up the first down. Didn't get very far on that last play. And he even had to help us in blocking. I guess the defense had their number. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan. But they were, you know, hoping for more. This one will fall incomplete. That will bring up fourth down. Jerry Felder had that ball in his hands on that play, and then he just dropped it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose with that guy. Second drop pass. Well, Dan, his inconsistency makes the coach very nervous, I can tell you that. Bidwell gets ready to punt it away. Bidwell takes the snap and punts it away. Neal deals the punt at the 26. Tackled at the 29. Portland Neal didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The Renegades will start this drive at their own 29-yard line. Chris Dinkins is all by himself, and he'll take advantage of it. Easy catch. Well, you know, this is just not working. He made a good play on the ball, but for what? This team is always thrown short. Problem is, they're not picking up any significant yardage after the catch. Exactly. Richard gets the piece and will end up losing a couple. 
Jeff Howard targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That's his second tackle so far. Easily outclassed his defender on that catch, and he had that play all the way. They had a long way to go for the first, and they get it just barely. Barely is right. Nice job to dig down deep and get it done. First down, both wide outs to the right. Joe Theismann throws right past the coverage and into his receiver's hands. Nice throw. What a pass, and he is generating some great numbers. Oh, absolutely, Dan. So far, he's got 213 yards and one touchdown. Theismann tips it to the left sideline, and it is not real in. Incomplete. Willie Mack ran a corner route back there, but unable to make the reception. Well, you know, at some point it becomes the coach's fault for leading him in there. Yeah, after five drop balls, Dan, you'd think it would just stop being thrown in his direction. triple coverage and came away with a phenomenal catch. This guy can really twist up the coverage in that short area. That's right, Dan. Those quick routes have been open for him all day. Obviously, that's what the defense wants to give him. Nice defensive stop. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. <laughs> Theismann throws his forward, and he hits his man for a pickup of nine. Joe Theismann has a knack for sticking square pegs through round holes when it comes to completing a tough pass. Again, he uses the middle of the field to advance the football. Uh -huh. And Dan, why not? Well, they, they found some seams, some crease right in the middle, and, well, they feel they can take advantage of it at any time. You know, Dan, this might be a nice time to try a little fade to their go-to receiver. Kind of pickup should be no problem for us. Muliatalo was out on the outside, but he didn't quite have a position to make the catch. Peter, in third down situations, they have not been successful at all with the pass. This play was more proof. Boy, third is such a crucial down, Dan. And when you don't convert, it really hurts. Fourth down, and they're going for it.
The Condors will start this drive deep in their own territory with the clock at 1.52. First down, the clock is stopped at 147. Anderson used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. his 20th carry ends out right back down at the 27 penalty marker down on the play let's listen to the call Takes a knee, and the clock will tick down. That's all, folks. They can now run out the clock. What a performance. They'll take their sweet time getting this playoff, Dan. There's no reason for them to hurry the snap. Womack takes a knee, and the clock will tick down. Dan, I want to point out something on that last play. Did you notice the job he did in letting the play clock wind all the way down before snapping the ball? That's good clock management. We need a big chunk here, boys. This ain't going to be easy. Lomax takes a knee, and that will do it. Well, there's a loss that'll bring up fourth down, Dan. And while it's a big play, the clock still ticks on. Another 40 seconds will roll off the clock here. And that is going to do it for this one. The Condors come out on top 17 to 10. With that, let's look back at some of the plays that made the difference in this one. That was an exciting game. So let's not waste any time in getting to the highlights in our post-game show.
will pick up the action midway through the third quarter. After driving 59 yards on 13 plays, O'Donnell would come on and connect on the field goal try. A 36-yard field goal. The Renegades, end of the third quarter, Mack had to work to find an opening, but he was able to haul this one in. Unfortunately, the drive stopped shortly afterwards, and they had to punt it away. Midway through the fourth, the Renegades, back by seven. Theismann would find his target on this one, and that's where we'll have to leave this one. The Condors edge out a win, 17 to 10. So then, it's time to give recognition to our 2K Sports player of the game. Otis Anderson turned in yet another legendary outing. Oh, what a performance, and I have no doubt that this isn't the last time he'll showcase his talents. We'll be hearing much more from this guy as time goes on. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time. from Municipal Stadium. Our matchup today features The Rush. They'll be competing against the G's. I'm Dan Stevens. I'll be calling the game. And as always, Peter O'Keefe will deliver the color. Let's take a look at today's all-pro lineups, Peter. Well, here's two players who need no introduction. They set the pace for the entire game. They threaten to break it open every time they step on the field. But it's just as impressive on the other side. Well, these two players are without compare. They are all pros in every way. They elevate the game to a whole new height. Okay, Peter, here's the coin toss. Okay, Joe. How you been? We want tails. We want the ball. Webster boots it downfield, and we're underway. McCleskey decides to take it out of the end zone. Back down at the 20. Antoine McCleskey got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. This is what we're going to do. Tight, triple, strong draw. Focus on this one. Break. The G's bring their offense on the field and will start the drive at their own 20-yard line. Morris carries it past scrimmage and barely picks up the first down. Willard Morris can thank his blockers for that last play. If it wasn't for them, that play would have tanked. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chains. And let me tell you, Dan, hearing those chains move is one of the best sounds in the game for an offense.
Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. Morris catches it in the back, and he's just barely past the markers for a first. Look out now! Bring it! Pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Hey, makes the nice catch, and he's got the first down and a whole lot more. Tim Sims laid this pass in beautifully, rendering the defense irrelevant. When you can make accurate throws like that, the whole field starts to open up for you. His first huge connection of the day was two inches from the sun, I swear. All right, settle down. Slight exaggeration there, guys. All right, that was a big play. This defense better watch themselves. The line has just been drawn. Morris will take the handoff and picks up a couple. Let's finish this drive. Man makes the catch out to the left and gets past the markers for a first down. Tim Sims gambles big time on this play and it works. Makes it a little more exciting to watch too. Oh, if he wasn't accurate on this throw, it would have been an interception. It's a real fine line. Nice pass, Peter, and he's hey. really lighting up the stat sheet. Oh, you got it. So far, he's got 53 yards and no interceptions. Picks up a yard on the play, and that brings up second down. Willard Morris had blockers on his side on that last play, but the defense was too smart. It gave him nowhere to go. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were you know, hoping for more. a nice stop in the backfield here throwing his man into the turf behind the line i guess the ball carrier's travel plans were canceled oh he's not going anywhere pow you're down nice tackle that's his second tackle so far sure the only one to touch the football was him the defense denies the opportunity for the score and instead forces them into a fourth down situation pressure cooker of a play and the d played it tight fourth down and the field goal unit is on the field from 36 yards out and they take the lead. James Hakeem has little trouble pooching this one through. Let's see it again. Yep, he knows that you aren't allowed to miss many of those in this league. A 
Hakeem boots it away. Moreau fields it way back at the two. Back down at the 26. Bubba Moreau is able to find some weak spots in the defense. Got a good run back off that kick. The rush offense takes the field, and they will start at their own 26-yard line. it in the flat and is at the 30. Tackled at the 31. Brian Taylor nabbed the pass without any challenge whatsoever from the defense. When you're that open, every quarterback in the league can get it to you. They move the ball and it will be second down. Oh. Six yards to go. Patton tips it away on the coverage. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Brian Patton came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. It seemed like the defense read that one from the beginning and they forced the incompletion with Ruddle to be. Beautiful call by the D coordinator. It'll be fourth down. Rutledge lines up to punt after the three and out. Takes the snap and punts it away. McCleskey fields the deep punt at the 26. Tackled at the 27. The G's came away with three last time out and are looking for more. They'll start this drive at their own 27-yard line. Butts penetrates and makes the stop at the 24. Dave Butts would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. Big play. Peter, they put an end to that play well in the backfield, and they had a real good read on that. Yeah, it all starts with the guys up front, Dan, and then everybody follows. Second down coming up. and that will be two losses in a row. Watch the double team over there. Anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. That's the second time he slapped that ball out of there. Excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball passed. Pop hard at the 45. 
Key McElhaney got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The rush stalled early last drive. We'll have to see what happens here. We'll start at their 45-yard line. Taylor gets the call on first down and ends up losing about three. Leonard Marshall would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Right. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Before he got to the markers, a good game, but not good enough. The defense let them get a bite of yards, but there's still a lot left on their plates. I don't think they have an appetite to allow a conversion here. Touche, fourth down ahead. Rutledge lines up for the punt. Rutledge takes the snap and hits a beauty. Let the punt bounce for a touchback. J.P. Rutledge saw his kick go squirrely on him for a touchback. <laughs> Tough luck. The G's will start this drive at their own 20-yard line. Aaron Wright came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. That had potential for some yards, Peter, but the defense was on top of it and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming up. his second tackle so far. I want to see you tighten up that side of the line. perfectly to swipe away that pass for the interception. Oh, beautiful job. I swear, he is so high, only dogs can hear him. Boy, that was a heads-up play to come away with his first interception of the game. Yeah, you gotta love D like that. The Rush have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at the 42-yard line. Second down. Third down from the eye. Yeah. 
Montana fires this one over the middle, and it's knocked down at the line incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Dwight Clark snuck across the middle that time, but could not make a play on the ball. Peter, in third down situations, they have not been successful at all with the pass. This play was more proof. Boy, third is such a crucial down, Dan. And when you don't convert, it, it really hurts. Rutledge lines up to punt after the three and out. Rutledge gets the snap and punts it away. This will fly out of bounds at the 12. J.P. Rutledge did a good job angling the punt out of bounds, so the offense will start off stuck inside the 20. The G's were intercepted last time out. We'll see what happens here. We'll start at their own 12-yard line. Second down. And that'll do it for quarter number one. The G's with a small lead, three to nothing. This is a big one right here, boys. Double week stretch. Focus on this one. Break. They don't let that play get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will bring up third down. This is big for us. We got to keep this thing close. We can stop these guys. Let's go. This on a rope, and it's tipped, incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Hugh McElhaney couldn't get all the way positioned for the interception, but still managed to graze the ball with his fingertips. That was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air, and the offense is looking frustrated. The D is showing excellent fundamentals right here. Jennings lines up deep in his own territory to punt it away. Jennings gets the snap and punts it away. McElhen feels the punt at the 43. Tackled at the 47. Hugh McElhen got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Rush haven't gotten much out of their offense recently and are looking to get back on track here. This drive begins at their 47-yard line. Montana fires this one over the middle, and it's tipped incomplete. Mike Hunt turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. That had potential for some yards, Peter, but the defense was on top of it and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming up.
throws a big high lob and it's intercepted. Locked down at the 24. Y'all see that pick? Textbook, baby. Textbook. The G's are going to try and capitalize on the interception. They'll start this drive at their own 24-yard line. Johnson makes a tough catch and picks up four on the play. Hey, what was the problem there? Bad throw. I just got to shake it off and move on. Sims got blasted back there just as he released the ball. Ouch. That would have gotten the first, but it's incomplete, and it will be third down. You be ready out there. You hear me? Victor Williamson made the save, dropping the ball carrier before he could get to the markers. The defense didn't budge on that play, and they force a fourth down. Jennings takes the long snap and punts it away. McElvey at the 29. Stopped at the 33. Hugh McElhenney got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Rush have been locked in a defensive slugfest so far and will start this drive at their 33-yard line. the toss and runs into traffic and beat finally stopped at the 48 first down they gobble up 20 yards on this play this is a formidable rushing game dan a well-designed play there peter and they will move the chains and let me tell you dan hearing those chains move is one of the best sounds in the game for an offense a guy shadowing him but still manages to make the catch he beats his man cold it's all about staking your turf he just couldn't get cranked up coming out of the tunnel waiting until the second quarter to make his first catch and you know that's a big confidence builder dan now he should be able to settle into his game and contribute Stop the 
some blocking help on that last one, but he was still left with nowhere to go. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. fourth down Mike Haynes gets a good break off the snap and sticks to his man like glue nowhere really to put that ball and the quarterback should have looked elsewhere well the knee holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion that was a good call by the defensive coordinator oh, it sure was perfect D for that situation and it will bring up fourth down fourth down and the field goal unit is on the field The 44-yard attempt, and it's good! Johnny Webster knocks through a good-sized kick. Watch here. Nowhere close to his max, but he's obviously still very pleased to pull it off. Webster boots it away. McCleskey fields the kickoff at the one. Dodges the tackle, hammered down at the 24. The G's take the field and will start out at their own 24-yard line. Second down, two wideouts on the field. Tim Sims made a nice throw there, got it right past the defender. He's been on point with the short pass so far, Dan. That pattern's worked so well, we're probably going to see it over and over again. Well, why not, Peter? His receivers are open and making grabs, and nobody has really stopped him from doing it. Morris will get the carry on down and can't convert the third down. It'll be fourth down. Victor Williamson made the save, dropping the ball carrier before he could get to the markers. That's his second tackle so far. How about blocking this thing? Come on, the swarm has got it. Snap and punts it away. McElhen heals the front at the 23. Locked down at the 28. Hugh McElhen didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The rush could take the lead going into the locker room as their offense will start at their own 28-yard line. Craig takes it off the toss and passes the line. Brought down at the 29. Roger Craig powered forward with the football thanks to some initial blocking. Problem was they couldn't keep that push going for very long. Not much there. It'll be second down. Oh. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Oh. 
Pete Reese rattles the ball carrier's cage there so much so that the football comes loose. And then since he isn't the one who just got his bell rung, he's alert enough to recover the fumble. Peter, there are many ways you can start a drive, but uh, a turnover is not one of them. No, definitely not. That was a big-time play. The G's offense takes the field, and they are already in field goal position. They'll start at the 27-yard line. Sims makes the pass and the reception is made for first and more touchdown. Randall Gray, there's no one around to stop him, and what are the defenders doing out there? What? I mean, were they thinking he'd drop him? Uh, apparently, they, were they weren't they were even thinking at all. It makes you wonder how far away we are from substitutions in that secondary. Here they connect with him again. That's the second deep ball he's grabbed today. Well, without an adjustment in that secondary, Dan, I guarantee you he's going to come back for more. And it's good. Hakeem crushes this one deep. Moreau is coming out with it. Back down at the 20. We have a penalty marker on the play. Let's get the call from the field. Pios flipped his man on that last play, and the ref saw it, threw the flag. There's a penalty. The rush comes out and has an opportunity to tie it before the break. They'll start at their own 10-yard line. over the opposition and got the yards. They move the ball and it will be second down. Second down, two receivers to the left. check out this replay you'll find a few examples of how these guys earn their paycheck week in and week out baby and hey there's no better way of earning a paycheck than knocking a few heads down there on the field first down with a split backfield came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. That was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air and the offense is looking frustrated. The D is showing excellent fundamentals right here. Rifles it out left side, and it is not real in, incomplete. 
Steve Taylor closed in from the zone and forced the incompletion. On second down, they try for the first, but it's played well by the defense. That will bring up third down. Nice pressure that time. Third down, three wideouts in the game. Rutledge takes the snap and punts it away. The class takes it at the 41. Drag down at the 45. The G's are looking for some separation before the half. And we'll start this drive at their 45-yard line. Wright kicks it away on the coverage, incomplete. Aaron Wright came in and got a hand on that football. He left no chance for a reception there. Yet another big play by this defense. That was their fifth batted ball today. Yeah, you can see them start to anticipate the path of the throw the minute the quarterback winds up. Watch your side! Watch your side! Take him down before he got to the markers, but whew, it was close. That's his second tackle so far. Let the punt bounce for a touchdown. And that'll do it for the first half of this one. The G's are out in front, 10 to 3. Okay, Dan, let's get this halftime show started. What do you have for us? Now we'll look at our halftime comparison, and as you can see, Total yards definitely tell the story thus far. The G's should be way ahead on the scoreboard, but somehow they've let their opponents hang in there with them. Let's see if they can change things in the second half. Let's get started in this one early in the first quarter. Gray is going to try to stretch the field here, and he is going to make them pay. That set up a 37-yard field goal. The G's get the first points of the game and go up by three. Towards the end of the first quarter, the ball at their own 19. Hicks shows some great awareness here as he gets himself into position to pick this one off. 
Later on in the second quarter, the rush down by three. Haynes was in the right place at the right time as his interception was a possible momentum shifter. The rush, middle of the second. Webster would be called upon for the field goal try and he'd come through. A 45 yard field goal. Game tied, three all. Burgess would snuff out a drive on this one as he's there to recover the fumble. After recovering a fumble, the G's already inside field goal range. Sims would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. A 27-yard touchdown for the visitors. And that's how we'll round this one out. The Rush are down but still in it, 10 to 3. All right, good work, partner. The Rush will receive to start the second half, and this is a tight contest. Currently, they're down 10 to 3. Let's get down to the field and the action. Hakeem sends it away to begin the second half. Moreau fields the second half kickoff at the one. Oh, the 25. Bubba Moreau got a very respectable return off that nice kickoff there, Dan. The Rush are on the field, and they have not produced well at all. They're looking for an answer as they start this drive at their own 25-yard line. Craig gets the call on first down and almost gets back to the line of scrimmage, but not quite before he's taken down. Pete Reese got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Third down, six yards to go. Montana makes the long, long pass, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Terrence Williams anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. It seemed like the defense read that one from the beginning and they forced the incompletion with relative ease. Beautiful call by the D coordinator. It'll be fourth down. Takes the long snap and punts it away. McClaskey deals the punt at the 29. Stop at the 32. The G's stalled early last drive. We'll have to see what happens here. We'll start at their 32 yard line. Morris takes his 13th carry of the game and maybe picks up one on the play. Second down, two tight ends in the game. Bowden just pushes him back in time on this one. 
Big loss. Great defensive play. Watch. Oh, it's all about pursuing your man. You got to stay with him, and he did just that to get the tackle. They forced that one backwards, and that's going to make this third down that much harder. Yeah, they also make it easier on themselves by wiping out all of the potential short yardage plays they might face. Third and long. one out to the left and it's tipped incomplete fourth down coming up Aaron Wright came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there you know Peter if this were volleyball that would have been the defense's sixth spike of the match yeah the O keeps setting it up and the D keeps sending right. it back The rush will begin the drive at their 36-yard line. perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line pushing them back a few yards in the process great effort that's his third tackle of the game all right big play let's do it again oh yeah i hope they come at us the same way let's go Taylor took advantage of some really good blocking there on that last run. When you get the initial surge like that, good things happen, especially in the ground game. They move the ball, and that'll bring up third down. made the stop and forced him out but he couldn't stop the play before they got past the markers they're unable to stop them on third down and allow the first yeah the execution was definitely lacking there first down from the eye Clark had nobody on him. The quarterback saw it and got the ball to him. He was shut out the first half, but with that catch, he gets an opportunity to make up for it here in the third. He ran a great route and gave his quarterback a nice target to throw to. That's textbook. Brought down the ball carrier before the markers. There was some gain there, but not enough for the first. They hold pretty firm there, and they've got to do it again on third and short. Craig played it smart back there by following his blockers, and that allowed him to make some good yards. A nice play, and with only a short distance to the first, they put it together and make it happen. Yeah, third and short always looks easy, but it's not, Dan. That's good execution. First down, and this is the seventh play of the drive. Craig makes up the yard on the play, and that brings 
brings up second down. it off the top and takes it up field right down at the 36. Taylor had to leave the field earlier in the game and now we've gotten word on his condition. Peter? The trainers are apparently saying that he's got a sore neck. They are massaging it and it's working well. Expect to see him on the field later in the game. Thanks Peter. Montana rifle Chris Nedman has some company on this play, but he still makes the catch. That's good concentration and focus. It's worth another look. Oh, maybe they should have triple covered him there. A nice gain, and they easily convert on third down. Yeah, that was a good call. First down, three wideouts in the game. Got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got five tackles. chance they're gonna get this two million yards deny 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 let's go Montana makes a terrific completion in double coverage here. Wow, now that is one confident QB. Again, he uses the middle of the field to advance the football. And uh -huh. Dan, why not? Well, they, they found some seams, some crease right in the middle, and, well, they feel they can take advantage of it at any time. Oh, look at the quarterback and the star tight end there. you got to think they'll try to hook up. <laughs> If you can go back to these short, successful plays, you can stitch together some very nice drives. And keep their defense on the field. Great play. Peter, that will put a touchdown in his stat column. And that's always nice to have, Dan. So far, he's got 54 yards and one touchdown. Webster booms one downfield. McCleskey decides to take it out of the end zone. Stop at the 22. Antoine McCleskey took it out of the end zone, and while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20, so it all comes out in the wash on that play.
The G's have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at their own 22-yard line. Pete Bowden keeps his man from getting back to the line. Let's watch. Pow! Oh, that's got to hurt. That will be his fourth tackle so far. What do you think of his performance, Peter? Solid game, Dan. Really carrying his sizable weight out there. close by but was able to bring down the catch this guy can really twist up the coverage in that short area that's right dan those quick routes have been open for him all day obviously that's what the defense wants to give him Side back there, but he couldn't make the catch. Third drop of the game for him, Peter. And look, the coach looks absolutely frustrated. Oh, yeah, Dan. Mistakes can kill what you're trying to accomplish on offense. No doubt about it. Jennings takes the snap and punts it away. McElhenney makes a fair catch at the 44. The rush got into the end zone last time they had it, and they're looking to do it again. They'll start at their 45-yard line. up one on the play. Roger Craig had blockers on his side on that last play, but the defense was too smart. They gave him nowhere to go. Not much there. It'll be second down. Hey. Gotta take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Nice gain on this baby. Look at him eat up the yardage here. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chain. Great execution. First down, two wideouts on the field. in the books now and we're all tied Cooper makes the catch out to the left, and they can 
Joe Montana squeezes that ball through. Great placement. The defender is practically breathing down his neck. Yeah, you have to give credit to the receiver as well, Dan. It takes two guys to make a play like that work. He is just gunslinging it now. This groove has led to an impressive string of completion. Yeah, he's got to keep thinking one pass at a time, Dan, and stay zeroed in. It only takes one bad shot to break a streak. First down, 10 yards to go. Montana fires this one over the middle, and he's on target for a gain of five. Lamar Cooper had two guys on him on that play, but still managed to make the catch. They move the ball, and it will be second down. Made the save, dropping the ball carrier before he could get to the markers. He's got seven tackles so far. They only need a couple here, so let's buckle down. Great. It'll be fourth down. Mike Haynes would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. That'll get the defense going. Big play. They came up big, caused the loss of yards, and more important, forced the fourth down. What a play by this defense. You said it, Dano. They're all fired up down there. Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field. Webster kicks from 40 yards out, and they take the lead. Johnny Webster knocks through a good-sized kick. Watch here. Nowhere close to his max, but he's obviously still very pleased to pull it off. Webster crushes this one deep. McCleskey is coming out with it. Back down at the 21. Antoine McCleskey got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The G's are now on the field, and except for a few big plays, they can't be happy with their passing game. We'll see what they call on this drive as we start at their own 21-yard line. Choose up 14 yards, and that will bring up first down. Willard Morris keeps it in the family on this play, and he had a lot of brothers to help him. Yeah, that design run was a success because he followed his blockers. Without him, he wouldn't have gone anywhere. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chains. And let me tell you, Dan, hearing those chains move is one of the best sounds in the game for an offense. First down, one man down. Zips it to the left sideline, and it's tipped incomplete. Aaron Wright came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception. I mean, he's just unconscious out there. Oh. And a couple of those battered balls were almost intercepted. Dan, you can't coach that. He has rare instincts and incredible hand-eye coordination. Mulliatalo has this one in his hands and then 
Oh, drops it. That would have gotten the first, but it's incomplete, and it will be third down. Man, we need more out of you. Where you been today? Don't worry, man. I'm going to get it turned around. Go, go. think twice before going his direction. Jennings gets the snap and punts it away. McElhenney fields it at the 18. Left down at the 23. Hugh McElhenney didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The rush will start a drive with the lead for the first time this game. We'll begin at their own 23-yard line. Back at the 21. Steve Taylor targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That will be his fourth tackle so far. What do you think of his performance, Peter? Solid game, Dan. Really carrying his sizable weight out there. in front of us here. Piece of cake, man. Montana passes this one and it's still incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Brian Patton turned his hips to get into position and tip that ball away. Solid coverage. You know, Peter, if this were volleyball, that would have been the defense's sixth spike of the match. Yeah, the O keeps setting it up and the D keeps sending it back. Rutledge gets ready to punt it away. Gets the snap and punts it away. McCleskey at the 37. Bang down at the 42. Antoine McCleskey got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The G's come out and find themselves losing for the first time in the game. This drive will start at their 42-yard line. Sims throws a bullet to the flat and the reception made at the first line. Pushed out at the 49. Willard Morris knew the yardage ferry wasn't going to move the football for him, so he powered ahead for more after making the catch. Love to see that kind of effort. Time and time again, he makes a fantastic option of himself coming out of the backfield. Well, there are some runners that just have a knack for the passing game, and this guy's got it. Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. Morris takes it for his 17th carry, and will end up losing a bunch here. 
Scott Studwell just pushes him back in time on this one. Big loss, great defensive play. Watch. Oh, it's all about pursuing your man. You got to stay with him, and he did just that to get the tackle. They backed him up, and now they make it a bit tougher on a third down ahead. Yeah, good defensive play there, Dan. Let's see if they can stand strong for this one here. That's tackle number six for him. Good game so far. Oh, definitely. Fourth down, and they're going for it. The G's want to talk it over, and they take their first time out. Jennings lines up to punt after the three and out. Jennings takes the long snap and punts it away. Let the punt bounce for a touchback. Chris Jennings saw his kick go squirrely on him for a touchback. A good tough luck. is back in the game, setting up in the backfield. Carson tackles him for a big loss up to 14. Harry Carson executed a beautiful backfield tackle there to back him up. An awesome hit. He's been working hard so far. That's his eighth tackle. And each one of those eight left a bruise. That guy can hit. Harry Carson making that play. How often does it seem like we say yeah. that? He does so many things well. But what I always loved about Harry is his tackling ability. You will almost never see him miss a tackle that he has a chance to make. Pushes him back in time on this one. Big loss, great defensive play. Watch. Oh, it's all about pursuing your man. You got to stay with him, and he did just that to get the tackle. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got five tackles. Rutledge lines up deep in his own territory to punt it away. Rutledge takes the long snap and punts it away. McCleskey catches it at the 46. Tackle at the 48. 
Antoine McCleskey. Got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The G's will start this drive near midfield with the clock at 149. Second down, two tight ends in the game. Pull the top, falls in the pass, and he's got the first. The clock continues to tick down. First down, the clock is now at 109. football and left no chance for a reception there oh for this oh. is getting ridiculous the oh. offense just cannot get the ball past the reach of these defenders you're right dan and that's been one of the big stories of this game second down with the tight end right it his way that's great coordinated D nice pick I'm not saying they practiced that in preseason but I did see some volleyball nets around training camp Peter you couldn't ask for more from him today he has done his part and then some so far he's got two interceptions they've already won it Dan if they sit on the ball the clock will tick away and end it that last time out that the D has doesn't really amount to anything One a knee and the clock will tick down that last play wasted enough time to allow them to run out the clock now all they need to do is sit on it and this game is in the bag and that is going to do it for this one the rush come out on top 13 to 10 with this one in the books let's take a look back at some of the action So, the ball game is over. Let's take a quick look back at how it went with our post-game show. We'll start this one off late in the third quarter. Craig was able to make things pay off on the ground. A two-yard touchdown for the home team. The rush, again, tie it up 10-all. After driving 32 yards on eight plays, Webster is called upon to attempt the field goal, and this one is true. The rush connect on their second field goal. Late into the fourth quarter, the G's down by three. Hicks shows some great awareness here as he gets himself into position to pick this one off, and that will do it. The rush edge out a win, 13 to 10. So then, it's time to give recognition to our 2K Sports Player of the Game. 
Roger Craig showed us exactly why he's a legend. Well, he was the best player on the winning team. It's as simple as that. We'll see if he's able to keep up this high level of play in the games ahead. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time.